Aikatsu Cheer is my fan series that takes place after the events of Parade. Last time we covered the first season, but today we'll cover the finale. You can watch the first video here, but worry not, we'll summarize the first season before moving on. Raki and Wakaba have become diamond friends after the events of Parade. Olive joins Star Harmony expecting it to be easy, but she quickly learns how hard Aikatsu is. Kadi is her roommate, and while at first they don't get along, eventually they form Nobadol. They're joined by Nandi, a traveling idol, and April, a shy goth from Moonlit Academy. Together these two form Festivia. Pure Palette comes back for a bit and combines its sheer star to form a mega friends unit. Our main four combine too, and despite losing, it's an important milestone. After this, our final new characters appear, Aiko and Gabriella. Aiko's a stylist who's unsure of herself, and Gabriella's a really confident model. Together they form Mermaiden. When the Diamond Friends Cup starts, I left it open, but the winner is... nobody. It's a tie. Our main characters Novadal made it to the finals and tied with Cheerstar. Unwilling to accept this, the two vowed to face each other in a year. Episode 1 starts with Olive and Kaori doing a photo shoot in the park. They're posing for Aikatsu's style in their old PR when a beautiful voice interrupts them. The two stop for a moment and follow the sound to a calm girl singing her heart out. The two cheer, but she stops immediately. Her name is Evie, and she's feeling rather shy. The girls encourage her to become an idol, and she thanks them before leaving. After the shoot, the girls notice a banner for a new idol school, Future Academy. They're offering tours and auditions, so they decide to take a look. On the largest stage, they spot Evie again, who's taken their advice and is reassured by their presence in the crowd. Her voice stuns the judges, and Tamaki's ashamed she didn't scout her first. Evie thanks the girls for encouraging her, and the episode ends. Episode 2 is at Star Harmony, and it's during their career day. The main four attend, as idol alumni such as Love Me Tear talk about their current career paths. Nandi feels a little left out, as she not only doesn't have an idol school, but she also has no clue what she's doing anymore. She travels around with her candy shop, but recently, She's been feeling rather stuck. Her friend April empathizes, but Nandi wants to deal with it alone. When she opens her candy shop again, she tries to remember what made it special, and realizes the idols she met along the way were the real joy in this journey. As a result, she decides she's going to take her candy shop across Japan, spreading Aikatsu to as many people as possible. I felt that Nandi, as a traveling idol, should leave the story for a bit, so her title is a bit more credible. But anyway, episode 3 is all about Honeycat. They're holding their last show in space and are holding an audition to find their successors. Naturally and thematically, Nova dolls sign up. Olive's excited to be in space, but Cowdy's got a secret fear of heights. She's also worried her dancing is going to be a lot worse in zero gravity. The two sign up for the audition, and despite winning, Honeycat are really harsh. They force them to work hard in an intense training period, but by the end, they rise above and perform their very first show in space. Given that Nova Doll is a space-themed friend unit, it just made sense to have them succeed Honeycat in Space Katsu, hence this little episode to bring us some old favorites. Episode 4 is the last one for this mini-arc, and it's all about Eevee once again. We reunite with Cheerstar on an airplane when they receive a call from Future Academy's principal. This call reveals the two have been working together and that Cheerstar is hoping to prop up Future Academy as a worthy rival to Star Harmony. They're currently traveling across the world seeking to improve in different environments. The two agree to support Future Academy and Wakaba sends a secret gift that the audience doesn't get to see. Back at the school itself, Evie's preparing for her first big solo stage. She calls her new friends for help and they offer all the advice they can give. April reminds her to project her voice and Nandi calls Mermaiden to help style her. She's all set except for one thing, Evie needs a PR. Nandi says she could travel back to find the humming leaf designer but Evie declines. Strangely, she seems to have a PR already. She opens up a box in her dressing room, and there it is, the bellflower cord. They're not sure how she got it, given that Wakaba is still the public muse of the brand, but Evie's performance goes off without a hitch, and the girls celebrate 
In a scene backstage, we see that Tamaki's worried about Evie's potential and wonders if the girls know just how strong a performer she is. One thing I really admire about Aikatsu Friends is that it only focused on two new characters in season 2. While I didn't like the story, I do think that it would be smart to have just two girls, hence dedicating all this time to just one of them in the first four episodes. Evie is kind of treated like a new protagonist and slowly integrates into our main four. As new students at Just Future Academy, one girl causes trouble at every corner. Remy frequently vandalizes school property and Evie is assigned to her to set a good example. As a two bond, Remy helps Evie come out of her shell and Remy learns to reel it in through Evie. The two become friends and perform together in their school chords. At the end of the episode, Evie helps Remy found an art club as a creative outlet. In episode 8, an art festival is held in town and Aiko is invited as a makeup artist. She brings Gabriella along and the two meet Remy. Aiko paints a few faces before working on the mural. Remy pushed to attend the festival as community service. The three bond as they do makeup when a group of children asks to join the mural. Aiko is concerned, but Remy encourages them to join her. They all paint together and the episode ends with a mermaiden performance. At last, Remy has her first fans. I felt Remy should be connected to the other friends because we already had Nova Doll connect with Evie. Episode 9 takes the focus back to our main characters, as Dancing Mirage's designer is hosting a large fashion show at the designers conference. As a result, top models are scouted, including Kadi and Gabriella. They show up for what's probably their toughest audition yet. Kadi helps Gabriella as she's got more experience, but it's a lot of work for both of them. At the end of the show, they're both exhausted, but Gabriella is really happy. She thanks Kadi for the opportunity and promises to become a great model in the future. However, Kadi doesn't seem as excited. In episode 10, Star Harmony's visiting day arrives and Kadi's family comes to see her. Her younger sisters are excited to hear about her model work. She's upset with her progress, but recognizes the impact it has. Kadi looks over her magazines and a deep regret sweeps over her. Despite her work so far, Kadi doesn't really want to be a model. She's always loved dance and so decides to retire as a model. Her fans are worried, but she assures them she'll be a dancer for the rest of her career. This bold step is recognized by her designer, who supports Kadi's decision. She's glad she didn't force herself to do anything she didn't want. The episode ends with a performance in the Night Queen Chord. Episode 11 wraps up this little Remy arc, and it's her PR episode. Remy and Evie are hanging out as Evie's reading some magazines. Their grades are in, but Remy's still barely scraping by. Evie suggests she do something big or get expelled. Looking at her magazine, Evie points out Mio as the designer of Remy's brand, Material Color. Feeling desperate, she decides to seek her out. Mio's living in a penthouse at the moment where she works at her designs. When the two meet, Mio's really intrigued by Remy. She's a lot wilder than she expected, but her passion for the brand is true. Remy gushes over the designs and shows a real love for different fabrics, textures, and mosaics. Inspired by these words, Mio promises to make her a PR. When the big event comes, Remy receives her new PR, the Glass Art Cord. One thing I'm trying to do with the new characters is kind of interweave them with all the cast members because I feel it helps make them more connected. A huge problem in Friends Season 2 to me was the fact that Reflect Moon and Honeycat were kind of in their own orbit just doing whatever, while Pure Palette got to meet the actual main characters of the show. Part 3 begins back at Future Academy as the girls are given a weekend off to go home. Remy suggests a sleepover and the plan ensues. At Evie's house, she shows Remy her garden and the hippie decorations that adorn it. She's from a really chill family that adores nature, hence her singing in the park. The second half follows Remy's family, who live in a chaotic art studio shared by seven siblings. Remy's the oldest and gets Evie to play with her younger siblings. Her parents are really happy she's found a friend and thanks Evie for helping her settle in. As the sun sets, Remy finds Evie outside watching. After a little silence, she joins and the two hold hands. Evie says it's her favorite part of the day, and she's glad she could share this moment. Remy says they'll always be together and suggests they form a friend unit. With the sunset in mind, the two girls form Solar Power. 
With a big new friends unit, Future proposes a friendly competition. The event is called the Future Fest. Solar powers representing Future and Nova Doll Star Harmony. They go into it pretty casually and perform first. Their fans are pleased and the crowd roars, but it's nothing compared to Solar Power. With the school's intense training regimen, Solar Power has already surpassed them. The crowd is shocked as Nova Doll were Diamond Friends finalists. When they meet to shake hands on stage, all of this sullen, but Cody takes it a lot better. After what just happened, maybe beating Cheer Star was just a dream. We take a break from this to focus on Gabriella for our next episode. At the next step in her model career, Gabriella is asked to perform in the Divine Runway. Hibiki is putting together a large event and wants Gabriella to perform in a new PR. Gabriella agrees, but on the day of, a giant storm gets in the way. This delays Aiko, who was traveling to style her. Additionally, Gabriella is stuck in traffic and is forced to run to her event, arriving wet and muddy. The staff want to cancel, but Gabriella persists. With her fiery passion, she's able to dry off and performs without a hitch. It's a pretty simple episode, just giving her the new PR, but I always feel like weather in Friends Season 2 is weird and can do strange stuff, so I just wanted to play around with that idea for this one episode. Finally, we're back to Olive. Olive is reeling over her loss and wonders how much further she must go. Kaori cheers her up, but Olive is still uncertain. She loses her excitement for Aikatsu and wonders how much harder it's going to get. Kaori's a lot calmer since she's been an idol much longer and has failed a lot more toward her goal. Olive isn't sure what she wants though. Becoming the top idol kind of feels pointless. Kaori mobilizes her fans to send her fan mail, and Olive realizes how many dreams she's carrying. If not for anything, she wants to please her fans, even if that's the only reason. This episode's mostly to address the vagueness of being a top idol as a goal, and a vital step for the arc I want to take Olive in. The arc begins with solar power before sending us right back to our main characters, as I feel the future girls are really well established at this point. In episode 22, April feels she's holding back for Stivia and decides to do some solo Aikatsu. Nandi supports her and steps aside. As a result of Nandi traveling so much, April has been feeling like she's not making any progress and after losing in the Diamond Friends Cup, she's worried that she doesn't really deserve to be an idol. April decides to pursue a movie audition and pushes herself to overcome her shyness. As she stands alone on the audition stage, she slowly learns what she's really capable of. When the movie releases, the girls watch it together. Unlike the other drama episodes, this one would have the movie be the second half of the story, and I feel like April is the shyest character, so she should learn to still put herself out there while retaining those qualities. Episode 24 addresses our other shy character, whose name also starts with an A. It wasn't intentional. So Aiko gets an opportunity to style a popular model, but she's really unsure of her direction and ends up coming off unconfident. After Gabriella encourages her and lets her practice on her face, Aiko perfects a really unique look. When she gets to the gig, the model thanks her, and she realizes she might have a future in styling. Feeling reassured, Aiko finally feels worthy as an idol because she's got a clear path now. These two characters had to get these one-off episodes toward the end because I realized they didn't have too much going on, a minor theme for this season is their futures and what they're going to do, which is why we're just going to tick these boxes real quick so we can get to the bigger conflict of the season. Episode 26 is a follow-up on April, as her popularity is growing so she decides to host her own event. In search of help, she calls the girls together and each character brings their specialty to make it a success. Olive and Nandi handle catering, Remy and Cody make merchandise while Gabriella spreads the word using her platform. Evie feels out of place, but April tells her it's fine. She insists and offers to sing at the event. With the help of all her friends, the Moon Festival is a great success, and under the full moon, April performs in her new PR. In episode 28, Wakaba is finally coming back. So, so we start off in future, and Evie is reminiscing in school when her designer lets her know that she's been working on a new PR. With rumors of Wakaba returning, she might be reinstated as a muse. Filled with fear, Evie begins training furiously. It ends with her performance, but we do see that Remy's concerned about how much Evie is pushing herself. 
Episode 29 takes us back to Star Harmony when Nova Doll's manager alerts them that ticket sales are falling. No one can figure out why, but their recent concert doesn't seem to be generating as much buzz. They soon come to realize this is because Cheerstar is coming back on the very same day. Olive is really disappointed. After all this time, Cheerstar's presence in the idol world can still be felt. Despite the setback, the girls choose to perform in the stadium anyway. At the end of the first set, crowds look up and Cheerstar is descending from a helicopter. The two snicker as their arrival was a test suggested to them by Mirai. They applaud their resilience and re-acknowledge their rivalry. So these were mostly just a few short episodes to reinstate Cheerstar in the cast and kind of wrap up April and Aiko because I feel like they had the least going on. I also just wanted to draw new PRs for them and see if that was possible because I feel like Aiko's first PR was kind of ugly and I felt that April needed a new PR for the new season even though the Blood Moon concept was kind of wearing thin. Episode 30 Humming Leaf's newest PR is complete and Evie panics. Remy says it's not too important, but Evie is determined to remain the brand's face. When the designer calls her again, her heart sinks. Wakaba's on the other line, and she suggests a challenge. They'll independently perform in their favorite PRs. Evie agrees. Wakaba's up first, and she performs in the Eden Angel Chord. The designer smiles and says she expected as much from Wakaba. Next up, Evie's going to perform. Remy holds out her hand and Evie squeezes it. With everything on the line, Evie loses. Wakaba gains a new PR and Evie is crushed. She shuffles out of the room in dismay. Episode 31 is all about Raki. Raki's time abroad has forged her into a much better designer. With greater skills and experience, she's opening her first clothing store. She calls Kaori to help sew a few things, and Olive tags along. The store generates a lot of buzz, and the girls attend the opening ceremony. Maple Craft is a success, and Raki reveals her latest PR. The crowd roars, but Raki says it's the last PR she'll ever wear. After the Diamond Friends Cup, she'll become a full-time designer. The announcement is sad, but she cheers them up with a performance. Now that that's all set up, it's finally time for the Diamond Friends Cup. First up is Mermaiden vs Festivia. Having been apart for most of the year, April and Nandy feel they've grown stronger. They reunite with Joy and decide to perform in their own PRs, feeling it represents their new philosophy. Mermaiden is prepared too, with Aiko feeling as confident as ever. For once, she's not nervous. Together they've come so far, and being a whole year behind the rest, it's a worthy feat making it this far. When the two friend units battle, the winner is Festivia. Aiko takes defeat gracefully, and Gabriella promises to beat them next time. The second match is Solar Power vs Nova Doll on the next day. In the dorms, Olive tells Kaori she's no longer focused on winning. Kaori's confused, but Olive clarifies, through all her losses, she's found that Aikatsu is its own reward. She's overcome the shame of her past failures, and is willing to accept any result from now on. Solar power, however, is a mess. Evie's still reeling from losing the PR and insists on working alone to better herself. Since she was given her first PR, she's desperate to prove her own strength. Till the last minute, Evie is working as her partner Remy watches. When the match comes, Evie is ready but exhausted. Remy insists they drop out, she's never cared about winning that much. She reminds her of the sunset and how recently they haven't been together much. Evie is silent as she motions toward the stage. When the girls perform, Evie is so tired that she collapses at the end of it. Despite a good score, her body is given out. Olive and Kaori rush to check on her, but the paramedics take her away. Kaori says she hopes Olive can still give it her all, and Remy asks for the same. When the two perform, they naturally surpass Solar Power's score. The finals pit Nova Doll against Festivia. These two are at their best, but when it comes to Frenergy, one duo wins, and Nova Doll are finally crowned Diamond Friends. As, their <laughs> As the euphoria washes over, the two hug and promise to remain friends forever. That concludes the story of Olive and Kaudi. But just like stars, there's still one thing left. 
With Novadol finally reaching them, Sheerstar and Novadol go on to form a mega friends group and perform while pushing each other to new heights. I know in Stars they just kind of put them on the same stage, Yuma and Hima that is, but I felt like having them form a mega friends and competing that way would be a more unique ending to this little fan series of mine. If you enjoyed it, be sure to let me know because this took a lot more work than I thought it would, but I'm really proud of the results. Follow my social media to see art projects like this happen in real time. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.